It's time now for Countywide, a special presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. Join Paul David and Brad Miller as they talk with our community's leaders, newsmakers, and people in the know. You'll hear about the hot topics that affect all our lives here in Yavapai County. And now, here's today's Countywide. Welcome to County Wine. I'm Paul David. Great to have you in studio today. It is April. We are talking fire this month. Uh, a lot of shows are going to actually be about fire, defensible space. Um, we've got a firefighter coming in later this month to show us what the gear looks like that they carry. Uh, today, Denny Folk with Yavapai Pike County Emergency Management is in studio today, as well as Marlene Summers. She is the Supervisor Tom Thurman's assistant, and we are talking, gosh, about just about all of it, aren't we? Defensible space. Mm -hmm. We are. Potential for evacuation. Um, right. Fire restrictions. Websites folks can go to to get more informed about this stuff. And before we get into the show, we had a wildfire over the weekend in Flagstaff, just outside Flagstaff, burned 175 acres. And I'm really surprised to hear all the fires that we are having right now and how many are actually attributed to abandoned campfires, especially with the Dose and the Yarnell Hill fire from last year. It's amazing. Right. We, we Isn't had it amazing? The, uh, we had that fire over on the backside of Triddle, and uh, that was caused by an abandoned uh, fire. And what we find is that over 90% of all fires in Arizona are human caused. Oh, yeah. People throwing out cigarette butts going down the highway. Uh, we get numerous fire starts along the highway, and that's one of the number one locations for fire starts. And some of them are accidental, right? I mean, yeah, sure. a, chain, a chain pops loose, maybe you're towing a trailer and the chain starts to drag and it sends off some sparks. Your catalytic converter, the, that, that clay mechanism in there, breaks apart and shoots out the side. Those really can't be avoided. No, they can't, but the throwing the cigarette butt out the window. That is be. definitely uh, a no-no. Absolutely, and, and, and you know, Anybody who has spent any time camping knows that whenever you leave your campfire, you always douse the fire, put some water on that thing, uh, mix it around a little bit so the water absorbs into the material. Mm -hmm. Make sure that fire is out because, that, you know, that's why fire restrictions uh, occur because the conditions get so, uh, so drastic and so severe that you just really can't take the risk. Are we, are we getting a sense from the public that we are indeed in an extreme fire hazard this year with, with the fact that our, our winter, there was really no winter. It was an extended right. fall and then spring picked up. It really wasn't winter this year. We haven't had any moisture. Well, you look back at January. January was the driest month on record. Ever. Ever. And uh, the most amount of moisture we got was in the monsoons, which ended in September. We had a little bit of rain since then, but there was not a whole lot of rain to maintain the moisture content in the, in the brush load and the fuel load. So right. that's why it's so brown out there right now. We should be experiencing a green up right now, and we're not. No, no. Normally right now, if, if it was a good Good winter, we have the spring flowers, and they are littering the hillsides from right. here to Flagstaff and south to Phoenix. And you don't see that this year. No. What I see when I drive north and south is you see a few little bits of green grass out there, but otherwise it's yellow and brown as far as the eye can see. Absolutely. Are we taking that seriously this year? We are. As a matter of fact, we're looking at fire restrictions coming up this Friday. It'll be put out in the uh, the, the media. We'll do a public, uh, public release of information and get that out once we... Uh, um, get uh, that information together, but we're looking at Friday morning. I know the Prescott is going to probably be releasing some information later on this week. And Flagstaff did. Yes. Flagstaff is going into fire restriction stage one Friday morning, 8 a.m. And I believe the Prescott is as well, and, and typically Yavapai County, we're going to follow suit, and we'll probably go into a fire ban on Friday morning at 8 a.m. Okay, what does that mean? What that means is, is for the unincorporated portions of the county, uh, we will have a fire ban for uh, any open flame. Uh, if you're going to be doing work out there with uh, torches or acetylene or welding or anything like that, you're going to need to get um, a variance uh, from my office. Feel free to give me a call and we can get you one. Uh, but uh, we want to make sure that people have uh, significant uh, 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 fire response capability on hand, that they have enough water to put a fire out, that they have tools available to, to put a fire out. So uh, if they're doing any commercial work or anything like that. Okay, so we're looking at fire restrictions and some bans. It would be, for, now, it'd be now, a fire ban for the county. Fire ban for the county. That, now that's different than a fire. That, well, I guess it is a fire restriction. It's a complete and... It'd be a I mean, it's, it's like even Right, that's even skipping the first one, which we yeah, normally right. go to, like Flagstaff is going to stage one where you can still have 
uh, your barbecues and stuff like that going, but right. no open flame. You can in the county as well, mm -hmm. but basically what we have Propane. Ask, Right, it's propane, and that you have a lid on your on your grill. Okay. So we're not we're not we're not shutting down grilling, and we're not shutting down that type of stuff. But open flame, uh, right now, it's very very dangerous out there, and and we're wanting to to mitigate that the best we can. And we're proving that each week. Absolutely. We really have been proving just how um, bad it is right now. I think I've been doing I don't know two, three, four stories a week where. One of the different fire agencies, Clarkdale had a little brush fire from somebody burning weeds just last Thursday, and I know there was a couple others last week. They're actually, you know what? You know what's sad is there's been so many over the past month and a half that I can't recall all of them already, and yes. usually I can. There's been a lot. You know, we had the secret fire. Uh, not that the fire was secret; it was in Secret Canyon. Right. Uh, we had the fire up in Flagstaff last week, mm -hmm. 175 acres, which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been having a lot of fires up in Northern Coconino County. We've been having a lot of fires, spot fires around uh, Yavapai County as well. Mm -hmm. I think the time is right to, to start uh, looking at uh, putting on some restrictions. It really is a serious situation. Let me ask you this now: In years past. Um, I guess I'm talking years ago, actually. It was, um, I can remember doing stories each day where, uh, say, Cottonwood Fire would go under restrictions. The next day, Verde Valley Fire would go under restrictions. But this one was in stage one, and this one was in stage two. Prescott National Forest would, uh, campgrounds only was where you could have a fire. And it got to be confusing where folks, you know, I'm, I'm telling them where the restrictions are, and eventually the entire newscast would just be, complete about, okay, here, if you live here, this is your restriction. If you live here, this is your restriction. And I've noticed over the last few years, we've kind of made, simplified that. We we're, have. we're sticking with that plan, right? Yeah, the, the county has actually uh, um, five uh, county zones for restrictions. We have the eastern zone, which is the Verde Valley. We have the southern zone, which extends uh, past Highway 169 south, all the way around the bottom side of the Bradshaw, Bradshaws over to uh, Wickenburg and Congress in that okay. area. The central portion, which takes the Wishoot Mountains as well as the uh, Bradshaws uh, and the Camp Wood area, that's the central region. And, and then the northern region, or four zones, the northern region extends from uh, about Chino Valley north all the way to Seligman. Okay. And so we have these various areas, and what we look at is the conditions in the area. If, if uh, rain has fallen over the Verde Valley and it's greened up, but we haven't received any significant moisture over the central or the western areas, mm -hmm. uh, we, could, we could not have a ban in this area and and have it over there but what we find is is that over the 8,000 square miles of the county the dryness is very consistent and in all fuel loads so we are probably going to be implementing it countywide as opposed to by section because it's it's dry everywhere okay and uh, so we're looking at that uh, starting on Friday and what you find is is that the reason why the county's restrictions are more robust than maybe the national forest is because we do not have uh, the fire response capability out in some of these wilderness areas of the county and consequently it's a lot of time before uh, uh, fire response gets from maybe Prescott to wherever the fire is at. So we try to, to make them a little bit more stronger than what the uh, national forest would be going into simply because of the time it takes for for response to get there, and we're wanting to try to people make people take a little bit extra caution in these areas. Okay, all right, we have to take our first break. Okay, a couple of the websites: regionalinfo-alert.org is another a website you can go to for more information. Facebook.com forward slash ycoem. That's the Facebook for the county. I'm Paul David. Stick around. Countywide. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires.
A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. You know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Look at me. Hey. Raymond, look at Mommy. Maybe the light hurts his eyes. Maybe she's just not hungry. Maybe he can't hear us. Maybe we're not stimulating him enough. Maybe it's a phase. Avoiding eye contact is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. Welcome back to County Wide. Great to have you along. We're talking with Denny Folk with Yabba Pine County Emergency Services and Marlene Summers is in studio. She's Supervisor Tom Thurman's assistant. You're going to be talking about being ready to evacuate. Okay. Before we get to that, let's talk defensible space. Now, we mm -hmm. talked about, okay, we're going to go into fire ban for the county on Friday morning, 8 a.m. Yes, sir. That's a done deal. Um, but then we have defensible space. We've talked a little bit about this and we've been running our PSA since March about defensible space, but let's throw it out there again because we still do have fires kicking up every day it seems like. Well right now we've got uh, uh, a little program out that says that it's too late to prepare mm -hmm. when you're told to evacuate and Marlene will talk more about that here in a minute, but what we're looking at right now is that right now is the time. Now is the time to prepare. Uh, we know that uh, defensible space uh, space pays big dividends uh, for saving your house. Uh, we have a lot of companies in Yavapai County, if you can't get out there and clean up your yard, if you can't clear that 30 feet necessary from brush from your house, uh, we have a lot of companies across Yavapai County that can do that for you. Okay. And uh, you feel free to give one of them a call, ask them to give you a quote. And if you need to find out what you have to do to make defensible space, call your local fire department. They'll come out and do an evaluation of your house. They'll take a look at your brush. They'll take a look at your plants, and they'll tell you how to do it. A lot of people think that defensible space is about making moonscape. It couldn't be farther from the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, what it's about is making islands of vegetation. And it's about removing the brush directly from the house. We know that fire has to have a continuous stream of fuel to be able to burn. And by removing that house, uh, that brush from away from the house, you give the firefighters an opportunity to save your home. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very important right now we need to prepare. And defensible space, if you want to find out more about it, you can call my office or you can go to firewise.org and that'll tell you what you need to do. There's a lot of That lot is of a really great stuff. website. It, it is. Yeah, it's it really awesome. is a good website. It's awesome. Um, what, we, we mentioned this before we started the show, but there are a lot of folks that have summer homes. Right. Um, and I've seen some of these summer cabins that have nobody in them in the summertime or in the wintertime. And, and you drive by them right now, and the roof is covered in pine needles, and the yard is, you know, overgrown and stuff like that with what moisture we did get over the winter. So is there any way we plan to reach out to those folks to make sure, other than TV and radio right now, to make sure they come and take a look at their property? You know, Denny had brought that up um, at a couple of meetings ago that we had, and um, he's absolutely right, and you are too. We've got to get this word out to the folks that aren't here so that they can either make for arrangements to some, for somebody to come and clean up their home or uh, to travel back and, and get their uh, property cleaned up. Um, so we do have a way of, of contacting the uh, part-time residents that we have. Okay, all right. It, it almost seems like it was such a nice winter that maybe people just kind of forgot that they had things to do, that there is still cleanup to do. Well, you know, it's a nice spring, and I can't think of a better thing to do on a Saturday than to clean up my yard and with the free <laughs> slash program the county's got going on right Good now. Point. You know, it's a perfect time. You can spend a morning. 
Uh, clean that uh, debris up from around your house, the brush up from around your house, move that line back 30 feet, and take all of that slash down to a transfer station. They're not going to charge you. Mm -hmm. And they'll grind that stuff right up and make biomass out of it, and it'll be, uh, it'll be good. It's not going to cost you a penny from now until June 1st. That's We've seen correct. in the past. We've seen in the past where fires have gone through communities, and you can see the houses that have had defensible space where the, the fire burns right up to their chain link or their wood fence and it sits there and it, and it didn't go any farther than that, but the houses on both sides of that house are gone. So it's, it's proof that defensible space works and it'll protect your property. We want to make sure people are ready too because the Dose fire and the Arnell Hill fires last year were kind of classic situations where, and, and I don't know if I'd be completely prepared. I sit here and talk about this, but I right. don't know if I'm completely prepared yet to if, if Danny came to my door, Marlene, right. you came to my door and knocked on and said, you need, you've got 10 minutes to leave. It, it's too late when told to evacuate. Yeah. Exactly. And that's the message that we're trying to get out so that people do start thinking about how, what do I need to do to prepare? Do I need to get my medication in place? You need, the recommendation is a, a week's worth of uh, medication to have in place. Uh, your pets, mm -hmm. food for your pets. Um, you know, in paper, your document, you don't think about having all these things ready to go. And so, again, we're trying to get that message out because it's too late when told to evacuate. So we call it the four P's that we have, and it's uh, prescriptions, like I said, pets, uh, paper, money, other important documents that you should also keep together and ready, and photos. I mean, how devastating to lose some of those photos that you've had for so long that mm -hmm. can't be replaced. Um, so it's definitely things that you need to start thinking about. Yeah, you need to have a, a few, some extra clothing items with you just in case it's a few days. Um, I don't know how long folks, I can't remember how long folks were out of their houses during the Yarnell and Dose. Yeah, our say, emergency operations week. center, Paul, was open 19 out of 21 days. We, okay. had, we had just a couple days between the Dose fire and the Yarnell. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the fire happened on, uh, for Yarnell on June 30th is when they evacuated. And then they were allowed back into their homes on July 8th or 9th. And so that's, that's a considerable amount of time to be away from your home. There it is. That's yeah. proof, though. So you're going to have, a, you said, a week's worth of medication. So Correct. that mm -hmm. seems to be about the right way. Well, what's your slogan? We've got a slogan that we're going to be it's pumping down late. everybody's throats right it's too late when told to evacuate. And, and that's exactly right. I think Gary Johnson from Sedona Fire, I did a story with him a couple weeks ago because we've been, we've been kind of doing this stuff too over the last month or so. And, and he was talking about usually if, if they're knocking on your door, you have mm -hmm. 10 minutes to get your stuff and then get out. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine being put in that situation. But if you're prepared and you have your things ready to go, you can go into autopilot and go because it's, I'm sure it's, it's just such a traumatic event when that happens. And it's the same thing we talk about when you go hiking. If you have a few essentials with you, as Al Cornell says from Yavapai Search and Rescue, if you have those few things with you and, and you're outside and you're hiking and all of a sudden I'm lost or I'm injured, by having those few things with you, you just remain more calm. Right. And the same thing applies to this. With any of these emergency things we talk about, that's the goal is to just keep people calm and say, okay, I'm gonna have to evacuate. I've got my pictures. Grab Fido, I got my pets, get some pet food, you got a little bit of food, you got some water, you got some clothes, your pictures, your pills, your pets, your papers. You have a plan. You have a plan. And you're prepared. And like I said, it does bring a sense of calmness. And uh, and that's exactly what, you don't want it to be more hectic and, and out of control than more. Mass hysteria. Exactly. Mass hysteria. <laughs> we have to take another break. Regionalinfo-alert.org is a really good website to go to. Firewise.org for that defensible space. It's got some really, uh, it's actually got kind of a worksheet on there you can click and do while you're on that one. And then facebook.com forward slash Y-C-O-E-M is uh, Facebook for Yavapai County. I'm Paul David. Stick around countywide back in just a couple minutes. He knew he could get pills in the community. He found his body in an apartment in Telford. I never thought my son would take prescription drugs without a prescription. Secure your medications and talk with your kids. Visit drugfree.org. Not 
steal pills from my friend's mom. We talk about all the common drugs, but never prescription medication. I was addicted to pills. Had I more knowledge, I would have done things differently. Secure your medications and talk with your kids. Visit drugfree.org. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. That ember can ignite and destroy your home or community. You can't control where that ember will land. Only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how you can help protect your community from wildfires. Welcome back to County Wide. We have just a couple minutes left in the program. I think you've heard me talk about it for... Uh, about a month and a half now, I think, maybe maybe longer. We've got individual community cleanups going on. I think Cottonwood's got one coming up on the 26th. The uh, Paulden area's got one coming up in May. There's several weekends where folks can go down and, and get rid of that. I think that's more like household appliances and furniture and things like that, but it's also for the slash. Right. But April 1st through June 1st, there is a huge free slash drop pro program, absolutely. right, Marlene? Yes, absolutely, and we do want to uh, thank the Yavapai County Board of Supervisors for approving this program um, for this year again, and it is a great opportunity to um, take your slash and get it dropped off for free. The different transfer stations that we have offering this are in Black Canyon City, Camp Verde, Congress, Mayor, Paulden, Seligman, and Skull Valley. And like I said, it does run through June 1st, so we do hope that people take advantage of the program. And thank you for getting the word out as well, and that's what we've been trying to do. I tell you, I just, the wildfire stories really bother me. They really do, I do, we do a lot of different stories, but the wildfire stories just go on and on and on, and it's just always devastation, especially last year. Anybody who did not pay attention to what happened last year, or the years prior with the, the Rodeo Chetiskai fire. I mean, look at how much land and homes that wiped out. The Wallow fire wiped out land and homes. We got the Yarnell Hill fire. It claimed lives and homes. The Dose fire. It, it's it, everyone's got to just open their eyes and say, okay, we, we've got to do this. This you is know, the Paul, this is the in, world we live in. We live right. in a hazardous environment. We do. And and what folks need to really understand is that chaparral. Fire is a part of the ecology of Chaparral, and, and the way that we have to, to look at it is how can we live with it? And one of the things that we do is build that defensible space, become firewise, and you know, it sounds really complicated, but moving brush 30 feet from your house isn't that complicated. Mm -hmm. And removing that, 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 the clippings and the slash, taking it to the transfer stations and, and getting rid of that material, it's really not all that complicated. And if you need help, you know, contact your local fire department. They'll come out and do an assessment for you. And after you get done with that assessment, contact somebody to come out and do it. Uh, you might be surprised at how affordable it actually is. And there's a lot of companies out there that do that type of business. That's right. And anytime you're thinking about lighting a match or something or burning anything, you should call your local fire department, check the county website, check the, the Forest Service websites to make sure you can actually be doing something like that. Because here we are. It's only mm -hmm. April. But we're, we're talking about fire bans, fire restrictions. We've had several wildfires already. The biggest one, Fisher Fire from over the weekend, 175 acres. Um, we're out of time, but um, I'm so glad you came in. Thank it's you. a huge help, Thank and anytime you, so you need to come back, Thank maybe we should have you back in on a monthly basis, Denny, just to kind of talk and give an update and stuff like that, or do a story with you and, and keep everybody informed on that. Denny, good to see you. Marley, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Paul David. That's today's Countywide, and we will talk to you again next time.